So, <coughs> afterwards I ended up going to, um, I was meeting a fellow literary agent and she said, let's meet in the lobby at 6.45, we'll take an Uber over to the reception dinner. And I went down there at 6.15, I'm like, what is she doing wanting to take an Uber? They have a beautiful spread here with salmon and everything else. I walk in, I sit down at a table, I'm talking to these women and I said, they said, are you a doctor? I said, oh heavens no, what makes you think that? And they're going, oh, well, we're nurses. And I said, oh, what kind of nurse? They go, oh, I'm, I'm anesthesia for proctology and urology. And I go, oh, Anastasia and I are really close friends. Started telling funny <laughs> stories, had a full meal. Then I hear them talking up front, thanking everybody. We can't wait for you to do, use our new scopes, all this stuff. I leaned over and I'm like, is this the writer's conference? <laughs> No, nope, it was the proctology and urology department. <laughs> Whoopsie! So, it's a fun story. It is a great story. It's a great story. <laughs> this is Instagram. How to build 10,000 followers. Let's see if I can. Oh, what's it? So, I thought you were not finished yet. No, no, no. I'm just trying to figure out if there's a way to dim the lights. I think there's got to be. There has to be. You had a slingshot, I can help. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know, I'm like, what's going on? How's that? Okay. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. Okay. So now you heard the comedic side. So my name is Dennis Schleicher. I'm a literary agent with Talcott Notch Literary Services, LLC, out of Milford, Connecticut. Interesting story, which you're going to hear later how I ended up finding my literary agent and how I ended up becoming and working for her. But I want to teach you how I grow, grew to 20,000 followers in one year on Instagram. And I'm going to take you through a little transformative journey that you're going to be able to see and feel free to take pictures, videos, whatever. And this has been such a journey for me. A lot of authors use Twitter. A lot of agents use Twitter. I can barely figure it out, but I'm good at it. I, I know what I'm doing, but I'm awesome at Instagram. And that's my forte. And that's the platform I make work for me. And it's so hard because I average anywhere from four to 800 DMs a day, just on Instagram alone, that I don't even open up what I call fake book because I have tens of thousands of unread DMs there. And I just one person can't manage that. So you have to do time management and, and understand what's going on. But I'm going to give you a little secret about um, when presenting, because I speak all over the world. I wear something called Mana. It's called war paint for men. When you speak, it gets rid of the shine. It's just white translucent powder. Highly recommend it if you are in front of the camera or anywhere, because it's just a way to get that shine off. There's nothing like seeing somebody on stage or presenting and they're dripping sweat or they have the greasy skin. So I call it Man Up, but it's War Paint for Men. And I just thought that would be kind of like a fun opener. So I am the author of a book called Is He Nuts? Why Would a Gay Man Become a Member of the Church of Jesus Christ? And it's won awards, it's been on the bestsellers list. It was, um, I was asked by the church to write this and when a general authority said to me, what do your gay friends say to you? And I'm like, are you nuts? We're gonna be married after a minute in no time. I looked at him and said, you're not ready to the church writership book. Ignored it. But my background is publishing. So I started out in 2006 and I, was just released as the president of the Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. And I had this prompting in March, 2020 to become a literary agent. So literally two weeks before the shutdown, <laughs> I became an agent. And I have a lot of fun with it though. You know, we roll with it, it is what it is. I enjoy helping you succeed and become successful. So, this is gonna be centered around some things that are kind of catchy, but I want you to think out of the box. I want you to think that your sandbox is here 
but you can move back there, you can move back there, you can move over there, you can move to the front lobby if you want. You, this is an open forum, and feel free to have this to be interactive, and you can ask questions, because I'm totally open to that. But I want you to think out of the box. So you enter the world of selling yourself without selling out yourself. That is what this is about. You don't, I see authors all the time, every nine post is buy my book, or it's on sale, or it's here, or it's there, or <laughs> sharing a link. Whenever you share a link, you cause the algorithm of any social media to go down because they don't want to take people off their platform. So if you share a video from YouTube on Facebook, it goes down. You share a video on YouTube on Instagram, or on anywhere, it goes down. You want to keep people on that platform. But I like thinking out of the box. So I'm known for stealing scripture, not realizing they gave them away for free. Baller. But the point is, is that find ways that you can create your signature, that you can have your eight second elevator pitch that you can set yourself apart, that if you're meeting with myself as an agent or submitting a query letter, I'm gonna see things that pop and I'm gonna to wanna to know more. And that's what it's about. Because it's a different world in publishing today, even what it was two years ago, even what it was five years ago. And I say the car I drove back in 1989 when I got my license, definitely ain't the car I drive today. And I hope that the clothes I wore to kindergarten back in the 70s wouldn't be something I'd be wearing today. Although things do come back. So I got creative and I said, I stole this book, ask me where it got me. And it became a great conversational piece. And it allowed me to share my elevator pitch, if you may. Stories work in any context. But you want to be careful with that you're authentic and that you're real because people can sense that. It's not easy getting 20,000 followers on Instagram. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it because when you have an engagement rate of over 30%, that's huge with the algorithm because people average about a 2% or a half percent engagement rate. But to get 30 and we're going to go over that briefly, but I want to keep this really simple for you guys. So with this, you want to be ready to own it. And what I say by this is what, once you put your name on something and you're known for something, you don't want to change and jump around genres. So you want to create yourself to be an expert. If you're writing fiction, and we're going to get into this, Developing yourself as an expert. If you are somebody who is writes about the Secret Service, be somebody that a radio show can call and say, hey, something just went down with the Secret Service. Are you available in a half hour to go on live radio? Be ready. I talked about this in the circle we did this morning when I was critiquing manuscripts. I said, look, if I got a call from CNN or CBS and they wanted me to go on, I guarantee you, all of you would understand if I went to my hotel room for 10 minutes and recorded an episode with Ellen over Zoom. You would understand. Because for me, it's about media placement. It's about, it's about getting you know, in front of the media, changing people's perception about not to be like myself, a Googleologist and saying, oh, I don't want to read that book. It's the most racist, sexist, homophobic church in the world. Or like I almost started an LGBT protest at the dedication of the Connecticut Temple with a thousand people because I was a director of pride for Hartford. I wasn't even on Instagram until after I joined the church. And so, but this isn't about that, but it is my story and it's my foundation. So I'm not trying to preach to you. I just want you to see how you can create your own niche with your fiction writing. So just bear with me. Always use your intuition. If something feels off, don't do it. Because when I go against that field, when I go against that, I am, am regretting it. So 
let's talk about um, the do's and don'ts of social media. Don't share links that take you off the page. And feel free to take a, a picture of this. Don't mass tag or spam others. It's against Instagram or Facebook or Meta or whatever they're called these days uh, to actually tag myself and a bunch of other people, unless I'm actually in the photo. You can't do it. You could get banned. So, but it's important. We're going to talk about cross promoting and not about making it about yourself, making it about somebody else, because that's going to get you credibility. Ask your friends to write and share reviews publicly. For a while, I was asking my friends to just post emojis underneath my comments to get that algorithm going. And you're gonna see how I did that shortly. Be authentic and sincere with every post. Avoid controversy at all cost. <coughs> and contention never wins. And that's my advice for do's and don'ts. So, this was me in August of 2020. My profile on Instagram had 2,112 followers. My engagement for this Rick was about 30%. You see where I have the purple box highlighted? That is your marketing. 140 characters you can post. That you need to refine. What it looked like back in 2020, it does not look like that now. You need to change it and keep it up and keep it, you know, fresh and see what works. And you're going to see these stories right here are highlighted stories that we're going to talk about when you share on that plus button up there. You can add 15 second stories up to a minute long. And for somebody that has more than 10,000 followers, I can just say, click on that link to order my book on Amazon. And I have what's called an Amazon affiliate program. I make more money off selling. You know what I'm saying, oh, brother. Yeah. I make more money off selling my book with that affiliate link than I do from the publisher. It's kind of funny. So you want to be able to use that, but know when to use it. And you'll notice that I changed all these highlights because that's my agent, Gina, who you'll see. And these look kind of scrawny and it's hard. But you're going to notice in the next one where this is what I look like now. So um, actually, this was taken um, last night. I am trending about 150 new followers a day. So I should be at 20,000 by the weekend. Now, I have an issue where I have to say official IG page, don't follow fake dash fan account. And I had to abbreviate it, and the reason being because there are so many dormant accounts with my name on it. If you type in Dennis Schleicher, you're going to see 30 that are just blank. They're following nobody, they have no followers, no posts, but what they're doing is they're waiting to sneak in and take my profile photo because I'm at a higher risk of being hacked as a public figure and in the media. And it is impossible to get a blue check mark. Um, my friend Marie Osman allowed me to use her publish it, publicist. And still, you have to get now tier one media. What is tier one media? You have to be in the New York Times. You have to be in USA Today. You have to be in um, Forbes. You have to be in all the top publications. But they also need your name, like Dennis Schleicher changing the world with inspiration or something in the title to be notable because they're making it harder and harder and harder to get that verification which i respect because look at what happened with twitter and look at with all the people they were giving it to i respect that but don't go out on social media wanting to get that blue check mark because it's just could be trouble too there's pros and cons to everything. Now, if you also look at this, I have, this is what works best, 19K following, so should you too. You have a call to action, TV, radio show host, my website. And then you look here, the middle one, it talks about my insights. And this is as of 
last night, or the 31st of August, look at all the green, the plus, plus, plus. Everything is growing. And that's because I'm active and I'm getting engagement. So we're gonna talk about how to do that. And one of the best ways to do it, like I don't have time to post post when I'm here, but I can post selfies of us or in front of the room and tag and then ask people a question. And then they could hit yes or no, or they could post their opinion or do polls or say, hey, do you know what I do for work? Do you know, you know, um, what a literary, a lot of people don't even know what a literary agent is. So you can ask those questions in your stories. And you notice here how I change these? Media, news, um, you know, friends, work. It's just there's book. There's different things that I did. The only one was under friends. I didn't make a new one to put under there. But you'll see how it's changed. It's more consistent and cleaner than what it was before with just those <coughs> images that you couldn't see of my agent and, and everything else. And what did I just do? Let's back. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh and that's not. Okay. Well, no, this is like one of those. Back. Back. Okay, just <laughs> let it. <laughs> let us just breathe for a minute. And send it. Ah, there we go. Hi, Marie. Call her. Okay. So now, see this little. Now, so you have to have there's personal accounts, there's a business account, and there's a creator account. At least have a creator account that gives you access to all these amazing insights. Personal account, you don't get that. So um, creator account is like a business, but if you're not a registered business, it's okay. Then you can click on view this insight, and it will give you this, and you can click on there. You don't need to buy apps for this. Instagram is amazing at telling me. I can tell you that 44% of my followers are from the planet of Utah. <laughs> I can tell you that 22.1% uh, of my followers are from Provo because of BYU. And I speak at BYU all three, four times a year. I can tell you that um, B when I speak at BYU Hawaii, it goes up because I see Hawaii as, as, go, as trending. They tell you everything. And I have to be honest, with this, I use AI software to get the first characters that are gonna grab your attention. I type it in, I pay $129 a month for this, but it's worth it because I'm building YouTube, I'm monetizing, <laughs> You have to have 1,000 followers, I'm at 700. You have to have 4,000 hours of watch time, I'm at 3,200. I'm trending just right to start monetizing. And my friend Marie is the one that prompted me to do that. And she said, Dennis, I'm gonna help you with, with Instagram. I'm gonna start with monetizing on YouTube. I'm gonna send you videos of me that nobody has. Of me at my home, riding my Harley, doing things like that. They get 25, 30,000 views. It's, it's incredible. So be creative. Now, this shows you here, you can click down, I can spend days, number of plays. This video right here had almost a half a million views. Marie had a quarter of a million, then it went to 164. This is where I'm like, I almost started a protest at the dedication of the Harper Temple, oh my gosh. And what you're gonna see is here, there's likes, comments, shares, saves. It's gonna give you the algorithm. A, this is so cool. A save is worth more than a share. A share is worth more than a comment. And a comment is worth more than a like. Can you say that again? <laughs> a save, which is this has 44 saves, is worth more than a share. A share is when they hit that little airplane and it goes up on your stories and it stays up there for 24 hours. Now, if they have a thousand friends that see that, that counts as a thousand views that your account reached, which brought this to almost 30,000 views. That gets your engagement up. And count account engagement, 1,400. Profile activity, I mean, we can, we can dissect this, but we're not doing that. This is just like a one-on-one thing. But just remember, worth more than that, than that, than that. So it just goes backwards. Just goes backwards. Mm -hmm. And what it is, is they can track how much time. So if you just like a video but don't watch it, 
they know. If you don't, if you don't click on the comments, and they know when you read the comments and how much time you spend scrolling through it. It's really fascinating. Like the algorithm is, is it's to, everybody thinks it's a secret, but you know what? I don't think it's that, that much of a secret. Okay, so with this, these are the different types of influencers. And sorry, I had trouble paginating this today. I need an assistant. Um, and there's Nano, which is 1,000 to 10,000. These are the ones that are getting paid a lot of money right now because they have a higher engagement rate. So Nike reached out to me and gave me these shoes with pizza pepperoni on it. They're the most uncomfortable <laughs> shoe in the world, but they're for decorative purposes only. And that's even with padding, but <clears throat> they look good. <laughs> and so you can do a lot once you hit 1K followers, but it's all a lot of work and it requires consistency. A micro influencer is between 10 and 100K, mid tier, and it just goes on and on and on. And then down here, I explain the different types. The first one is personal brands, activities they share online and off, 10,000 plus followers, highly you know, relevant and trusted within their focused network or niche. And that's where you want to get. But don't worry about if you have 30 unfollowers. People are gonna do follow, unfollow all the time. Don't worry about it. I get a thousand unfollowers a month because people are hoping to follow me. But I only follow 140 people. And so, um, <clears throat> because I, I have a zero follow back policy. What's an Instagram takeover? I love this because an Instagram takeover is Something I did about a month ago, actually August 22nd through 23rd, for Siegel Book. They're owned by Covenant Communications. It's owned by Deseret Industries and Books, which is a large publishing house. They own um, a total with Siegel. I think Siegel has 72 stores throughout Idaho, Utah, Arizona, Nevada. Deseret has like 56, I believe, throughout Idaho, all that throughout the LDS market, but it's Christian inspiration. I did an Instagram takeover with them, and these were the promotional flyers they did. This one is a square to post as a post post, and this is the one for that's more like a door that goes for your stories to promote it. And you can set reminders and say, this is gonna remind you when he's doing an Instagram takeover for them, please follow them, encourage, blah, blah, blah. I sold over 1,400 books doing that takeover and they only have 3,000 followers. So finding, I do takeovers at least once a month. I find other influencers within my niche. It started with Meridian Magazine. They had 50,000 I only had 3,000 followers and they had 50 or 60,000 followers. And they were like, sure, we'd love that because it gives the social media director a day off. Seriously, all they have to do is just sit back and watch. And they go, oh my gosh, the board loves it. Keep posting more, keep doing more, keep doing more stories. You're doing great. Go live a few times, you know, share a little sneak peek. This is what you can do. But see, before you get DMs get out of control, you're gonna want to reach out to other people within your genre and offer to do Instagram takeovers. And you may get a lot of no's and you may get a lot of, oh my gosh, this is awesome. You never know. You can do them for people with less followers than you, with more followers, same followers. Feel what works for you. It's all about, see, my reputation is up there. So I can do somebody that has a quarter of a million I've gone live with Marie Osmond. It's hilarious. You can find it on YouTube. It is, are we live? I don't know, can you see me? Can you hear me? Oh look, there's lights going by. I mean hearts. She drops the phone, I'm sideways. It was <laughs> just hilarious. Those make for the best bloopers though. People love to see behind the scenes stuff. They love to see what you do at home. They love to see what you do here and share them in your stories. Because that is where you get the nuts and bolts. That is where you get the trust for people. And that is okay. So what is cross-promoting? And what are the benefits? Working with other authors and promoting on social media. 
This is huge. We just talked about this. So think about, make a list in your mind. There's a book that I like. It's called um, something Publishing Planner. But there's also social media in it. It's $10 at the auction table. I'm probably going to be smacking myself because somebody's going to outbid me. But um, I think that's so cool. I do that with, with my social media plans sometimes when I'm going to post. And I also have it so that when I post on Instagram, it automatically posts to my author's page on Facebook. Facebook excuse me. Um, and so we, uh, <clears throat> okay, so where did I go here? So we talked about Instagram takeovers, and now we're going to talk about, okay. Um, oh, come on. Why doesn't it paginate? Using social media platform to promote other authors will. You're not making it about yourself. And when you make it about somebody else, they see here. So if you're giving a colleague or even somebody you don't know, Dr. Julie Hanks, a shout out, you think she, if she sees it, she's gonna reshare it in her stories? Do you think every time I tag Marie Osmond, do you think she shares it in her stories? Oh yeah. So this is what it's about, is making it about what can I do for you? Not me, 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 me. Because making it about other people is going to bring you sales. It's going to bring you recognition. It's going to see you as a credible force to be reckoned with. How to get other brands. <clears throat> okay, so I go into my post office box. It's like Christmas. I just spent 60 something days on the planet of Utah and I literally um, go back to my post office and they're scanning my packages and they're like, what, you only shop in Utah? And I'm, <laughs> long story. And I'm wheeling out carts, but everything, like these socks I'm wearing, Book of Mormon or Bible socks with the temple in, in you know, um, Hawaii, they're all sent to me for free. I get packages of shirts, t-shirts. Everybody knows me for wearing bow ties. I get fun bow ties. I get fun ties. I get handkerchiefs. I get great stuff. I just had um, a wall painting that's almost like this size that was sent to me, hand painted and signed by the author. I mean, it's like unbelievable. Um, you never know. These are some of the benefits and perks. And when you build your account this way, you can start charging people if you want. I don't. I keep it organic. That's what I'm using Instagram for. Um, what are, whoops. Sorry. Oh, my friend Becky McIntosh. So this was taken in 2019 when both our books came out. This was in Deseret Books in um, um, like American Fork or somewhere in Utah. And we're cross-promoting each other's books. We're doing it together. We went around and, and did that. That's a great way to tag the store. They share it. Everybody's happy. Now, I have some paginating things with photos flying by. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I'm doing when I make these things. So bear with me. Um, <clears throat> the making of an influencer, how to lay the foundation. Number one, be consistent. Number two, share substance. The more words that you put in, the more people have to scroll down. And you'll notice that I don't paginate it well. Like every time there's a new sentence, I'll arrow down too because it means that they have to scroll even more. And for heaven's sakes, you can use up to 30 hashtags. Do not put them in comments. I stay between six and nine hashtags. Wasn't gonna talk about this, but how you do that is you just put them at the bottom of here, okay? Just, you can do boom, 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 boom. And I do a third, a third, a third. Now, what does that mean? A third of the hashtags I use are about 1,000 to 10,000 it tells you when you type in the hashtags how many people use that hashtag. And then the other third is about 50 to 100. And the other third is over 500,000 uses to a million, two million, 10 million, whatever. And the reason why you do a third, a third, a third is so that when you show up on somebody's homepage, you have a chance of popping in all those hashtags if somebody follows a hashtag. It's useless, yes. What do you mean, what is it a third of, a third of? So a third of the number of people that follow that hashtag. So when I type in hashtag 
let's say, um, Jesus, it will come up with 20 million hashtags that were used for that. If, so you only want to keep a third. If you're doing nine hashtags, only do three that have that. Then you go down from there. So that way, in somebody's home feed, you have a higher chance of showing up. It's like, it, like the number one LDS hashtags, I've showed up in the top 1% of those. Um, which is, so did I answer that? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, be sure to establish yourself as a resource, and this is huge. Put value on what you're doing. Put value on it. Quote, I had a friend that wrote the forward for this, Al Carraway. She wrote more than the Tattooed Mormon. She has um, half a million followers on Instagram. It's pretty sad I had to buy at Barnes & Noble my own autographed copy because I give them all away uh, to bring here. But it's in hardback too. And she wrote the forward. She sent me a selfie video. She said, I was only gonna read 15 minutes of this on my treadmill tonight, but four and a half hours later, my hips and thighs, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I tell that story. That's fun. And I'll share it. And that's just, just fun. So um, if you write nonfiction, uh, this is extremely important. You want to go beyond the book. You need to blog. You need to use other social media platforms. You need to become a thought leader uh, for your topic. People know you're a sure thing. Anyone can write a book. I've noticed that with when I was studying Instagram, I was reading garbage on Kindle Unlimited. By the way, if you have Kindle Unlimited or Audio Unlimited, you can download my book for free. So enjoy it. It's five hours. Um, and it was written for the non-member, just to know that, let's not judge people. Don't be like Dennis, a Googleologist. Go to a source. You know, don't, I've had, I had an atheist leave a five-star review going, my gosh, this just totally changed my life. I now don't think he's nuts. And it's just, you have to think, out. I thought it to be like, I wanted to be for the non-member that was like you going, why would a gay man join that church when so many people are leaving over this? Why? I answer that. Um, another thing I love to do is take advantage of the top highlighted quotes. And you can find that under Kindle and just click on top highlighted quotes and it will tell you this one had 700 and pe something people highlighted this quote. I make those, I put them on little cards and post them on, oh, I didn't realize it was, hello Gina, it's my blog. Um, and I post them on Pinterest. So, okay, if you write fiction, this goes back to being a fan of your genre. You want to become a thought leader in your genre. This, I was the president and PR director for the Connected Authors and Publishers Association. This was about 10 years ago. This was Meet the Agents. It was a panel for something we did called Kappa University in Hartford. People flew in from Canada all over. I got up in front of 500 people and I said, you want to be known by an agent? Get up here and go, one, two, three, agents gone wild. Poe was funny. And that's exactly what I did, and every one of them knows me by name. This was 10 years ago. You can tell by my hair, my bow tie, and everything's different. I could put my hair in a ponytail. Gina and Saba. So Gina, when I sold my book, I literally sold it without an agent. I knew I needed to have one. So, I emailed six agents that I sold a book and I need an agent, here's the contract. The only person that got back to me was Gina. Serious. I was the president of the Connecticut Authors and Publishers Association. Nobody got back to me. I would book these people as agents. And so we developed such a kindred relationship that I said, wow, I think I want to try this. I want to do this. And I'm loving it. It's got a lot of challenges. I get a lot of no's. I got more no's than you probably get. I even put myself on a couch for a month where I couldn't move because I had so many rejections from acquisitions editors. And it was one of my clients said, Dennis, get your butt off that couch and go sell my book. How'd you know I was on the couch? <laughs> so get seen by people. Do something different. Wear fun shoes. Know me, 
I'm not going to be able to walk tonight. But be different. It doesn't require much, you know, or even just standing in the back of the room and using this as a little pointer, you know. Well, it doesn't really point, but I get that. But anyway, <laughs> you know, just or show up with those little like clown toys or those things you blow at parties and go woo, you know. And like if I say something you like, blow it. That will make me go, oh, who are you? That's cool. Or you may get somebody going, who's that crazy person back there? <laughs> you know what? Own it. If that's who you feel comfortable being, do it. I've done my stuff. See what I mean? I don't understand what happened here. And this is, now this one, things are gonna start flying by and I apologize. <laughs> <sighs> Boy. Um, so, all right. So with this one, <clears throat> you establish yourself as a thought leader. And by doing this, so I did this between August of 2020 and August of 21, when I hit 10,000 followers on my birthday, August 11th. And then um, it just started growing. And then I, I plateaued and I like was stuck at 10,000 forever. And then all of a sudden it just up to 11 and then it plateaued and then the last six months, it's been going from 15 all the way up to 20. So, see this again? Oh, there's no photo up there. There's one here. I'm like, see, I'm thinking out of the box. <laughs> this was in Payson, uh, Colorado, Falcon. I was speaking, and I'm like, come on, let's send this to your parents. You know, I'm known for stealing scripture, didn't realize it was being away for free. Um, it's funny things like this. That, that allow you to engage with others, to, to um, <clears throat> get it personal, provide advice, answer questions, and reply to people's comments, especially in the beginning. Now it is getting so hard for me to, but I try to reply to everybody's comments. Um, providing answers or resources will allow people to see you as a now, this is where I got these stupid pictures. I just want them all up here. I don't know how to, they just start blowing by. Okay. Um, <clears throat> again, every time I see Marie, we do something quirky. You know, we do something fun. This is my friend Al Caraway who wrote the forward for my book with the half a million followers. That was a month ago in July in, in, in Orem, Utah. We did something funky, you know? And then this was speaking at BYU. Um, at their campground, and I was just having fun. Think out of the box. Think of ways that you could do something to get that, to get, see, Al wouldn't do this before. Al wouldn't be like, you know, Marie, I'm like, come on, let's point. Open your mouth and point. She's like, do I have anything in my teeth? I'm like, nope, you're fine. I'm the one with the berry in my tooth. Um, okay, so. Uh, how are we doing on time? It is, okay, so we have a few minutes. See, this is what, what is going on with this? Oh my God. <laughs> I used to, Marie, I'm so sorry. Okay, so um, this one right here is the publisher to Cedar, he's the, um, the president of Cedar Four Publishing and Media. And I got him to do something fun. And everyone's like, you got him to do something fun. But <clears throat> no, your market and how to reach them. A strong platform is essential for sharing books. And I say share, not sell. You'll want it to be organic. And my, my audio book was number 89 in audibles today. I took a screenshot, I'm gonna post it in my stories with a link to my Amazon affiliate. Thank everybody for the 200 amazing five-star reviews, whatever, I always say honest reviews. And say, if you want to read more, click on this link. And then it's an organic way of sharing it for 24 hours in my stories that evaporates. And it's not pushy. You can effectively use social media as a strong networker. You are um, familiar with book bloggers, genres. Uh, you can break down the noise, ask questions. I get called to do radio interviews all the time. And back when they had the whole Black Lives Matter and the Catholic came out, the uh, Catholic, um, uh, the Pope came out and said, 
same-sex couples couldn't be blessed in the Catholic Church. I was on Rick Dayton. I was on every internationally syndicated show. I was on Oprah. I was on BYU Radio talking about that as the expert of inclusion and diversity and and somebody who was a victim of a hate crime and bullied as a child and beaten up by 15 students, which I do go into in my book, because I was accused of being gay because I was on a soap opera and I modeled in the 80s. So I wasn't even out. But so now I'm like the go-to person whenever somebody's bullied or whenever somebody's dealing with a hate crime or whenever. And so radio shows, if you get booked, you just, your Google ranking and you get a knowledge panel, which is huge. The more people that Google your name, the better off you are. Because that's what stimulates what's called a knowledge panel. Does everybody know what a knowledge panel is? Okay. It's just on the side when you Google something and it shows like recommended books and stuff. Um, <clears throat> even asking all of your friends for a week to Google your name is, is fabulous. So um, it works. So I would like to open this up to questions and see if there's anything that you guys have for me that I could answer because that's it for my presentation. I mean, I could talk about this for days. Yes? Hi there, this is terrific, thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Um, my question is, is in sharing content. God bless you. Um, so pulling, you know, other you. couples you. Uh, posts, yes. um, but you had said don't post anything that would take you off site. Yes. So how, like if you saw a YouTube video and you're like, oh my God, I really want to share this, I think yeah. you would love this, how would you put that? I, I would do it then. I would do it. Um, but you know, it's like, so there's apps that I use called Reshare and it gives people credit. And I, say, and I say, you know, like, thank you. At the end, I say, thank you so much to the missionary serving in England for this beautiful repost. You know, it depends on if it's a message that I really resonate with or like. And that's what, um, and, and actually, um, Instagram has something now where they are paying creators for the number of videos that people watch. And it's in here under creator resources and then bonuses down here. And then it will tell you that as of um, this month, I've made $192.32. And it will tell you what I made each you know, month from there. And you know, but some of my reels, like this one had 57,000 views. So all my reels had um, a quarter of a million and I made $122. Which this is how ignorant I am. I hear the word reels all the time for TikTok. It's short, short videos. It's short videos. Yep, that's it. Short video. I was talking about this in the critique session this morning. And Catherine, another literary agent, was talking about people have a Netflix mindset. Netflix, like they want to switch that channel, they want to binge watch. And I said, well, they're also unfortunately developing a ticky tock or, you know, mindset of seven to eight seconds. That's their attention span. So you want to be able to captivate their attention sometimes in bullet points and, and get their attention because their serotonin in their brain is, is changing. There's so many different things that are changing that have caused them to be boom, 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 boom a whole different generation. Yes? I have a two-part question. Yes, of course. Um, so I get, I get all these people following me. They yeah. have zero posts. Yep. They follow thousands of people and then they're following me. Yep. Um, so is there any advantage to following those kind of people no. back? No. Nope. I have a zero follow back policy. And the reason being is because I am on there to share inspiration. I'm not on there to see what you're doing. Right. And so that's something that I don't want my feed to be loaded up. Plus there's an algorithm to have um, less than, so with Instagram, and I didn't really get into this, but if you have, let's say a thousand followers, you don't want to be following more than a hundred in the beginning because it kind of shows Instagram that you're trying to be of an important person, meaning you're trying to be a, um, like a, an influencer or a thought leader or somebody that is an expert within your field. And it just shows, so you want to keep it. So I, I just follow about 130, 
30 or 40 people at that. I mostly follow other authors. Yeah. At mostly my and channel. that's good, you need to, because those are the ones that you want to reach out to, to try to become, to do, I didn't even get over the talk about this, but they have a thing now on Instagram where I can collaborate with you and we can do a post together. And you get my all of my, so if you only have a thousand followers and I get a half a million views, that counts as your engagement. So it's, um, it's really, and that's another thing that I do a lot with other people is collaborate. And so. So the second part of my question was, Oh, uh, frequency of posting. Um, I have 152 posts. I yeah. don't mainly post big things like book release or new yeah. covers or coming soon, that kind of thing. Yep. I, I'm not a... I, Grandchildren, I, dogs, babies. Everything. They, yeah, those are huge. I don't post children because I'm a public figure. I even have, when I'm in Utah, I could call a security detail to follow me around because sometimes I get mobbed. And especially, you know, fireworks or whatever, and they're there just to stand in the distance if they see that 30 people are like, I gotta tell you this story, I gotta tell you this, I gotta get a picture. It's like, all right, Dennis has to move along. And it's something that I never thought that would happen with 20,000 people, ever. But I'm in a different, I also get death threats. I'm told that I'm going to cause a suicide rate to go up in Utah. I get all these anti-people that just send me death letters and stuff. So it's a whole different genre than what you're dealing with, but you want to be following people back that are important. Okay, you know, thank you. That's your respect. Yeah. Let's do one. I think I heard an alarm go off, so I have four minutes, I think. Um, it goes to 420, so that way we have 10 minutes for the next person to set up. Yeah, um, yes, and I'll do you too. Uh, so, if I'm posting book recommendations and then um, on a separate account, I'm doing like writing tips. Those are two different audiences. Yes. So should you, uh, should I just keep two different accounts? Right. It should be very. I barely can manage my own. I would want to do another account. That's just me. You know, um, I would take the account and that has the most and just kind of make that your priority and focus on it. Because it's a lot of work. I mean, you could spend, during the pandemic, I spent hours coming up with posts. And so, it's just, yeah, you just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. But you shouldn't have to be working that hard on it. There's just certain things that sometimes you don't feel is, don't right, is not right. Does that make sense? Yes, yes. Thank you. One last question. Did you have one? Okay. Does anybody have one? Yes. How do I find a book influencer in my genre? Um, just search it on Instagram or YouTube, or not YouTube, I'm sorry, um, or Facebook, and, and find, yeah, and then just reach out to them. Or do you have authors in your genre that you like, that you respect? My friend Paula, who's a fellow agent at ours, just interviewed somebody, some big person, who was it? Somebody, we couldn't think of her last name, but it was like huge, New York Times, like 20 time New York Times best selling author. And her publisher wanted her to interview her, uh, like an Oprah style interview and stuff. So stuff like that's good. You know, and I always record it. Like I record this because you never know when I'm gonna fall over or I've fallen off a boat or fell into or tripped into a waterfall once. You know, it's like it all happens on video. Those make the best comedy things. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.